Hey everybody, welcome to Gunny Sharp Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is we're hitting part three of the series I was doing on understanding abrasives. This is a part that several people wanted me to go more in depth on. <clears throat> I said we would do it in a separate video. I'm going to talk a little bit about bonds and how abrasives are bonded into stones. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about concentration. And concentration comes up more when it's dealing with CBN and diamond bonded stones. We'll get into that in just a minute. Let's talk about bonds for a minute. So like in grinding tools, sharpening stones, or whatever they use the abrasive grid in, whether it's diamond, CBN, and that's mostly what we'll talk about today is diamond and CBN. Uh, it can consist of a abrasive coating or grit bonding, which gets it to adhere to whatever you're bonding it to. Uh, you have electro plating bonding that uses electroplating to bond diamond or CBN to the surface of a metal plate. You have your metallic bonded stones that is diamond or CBN in a molten metal. And it's rather than like a diamond plate where it's just coated on the surface, you have your abrasive throughout the metallic bonded stone like you would a resin stone. You have your lapping films and those are surface coat bonded, kind of like a diamond plate. Uh, <clears throat> they tend to be a lot more evenly distributed. And then you have different types of resin or different types of bond. Now the goal with bonding is to match your bond so that the abrasive grit are held into the bonding materials as long as the grit still has or can form cutting edges. If the worn abras abrasive grit remains in too long, then you stop cutting. And that's what you tend to get with uh, diamond plates, the plated diamond they'll start wearing and you can't renew that surface area. So they won't cut as aggressively as they once did. You notice that all across the board, but it, with the resin bonded or the metallic bonded or a type of bonding that you can expose new abrasive, then when it starts to wear and not cut as fast, then you can etch the metallic bonded. You can flatten or resurface uh, dress the resin bonded stones, and you get new abrasive exposed. And the resin bonded as they wear kind of expose new abrasive to some degree anyways. You do get a lot more aggressive cutting once you lap them or you lightly dress them. <clears throat> I, and on the other end of that spectrum, if the bond wears down before the abrasive grit, then you're not using your abrasive grip adequately. You're kind of wasting it. If you still have cutting surfaces, you don't want to um, have your abrasive come out or come out too early. Now that when it comes to sharpening stones, when it does come out early, if you're creating a slurry on there, then you are cutting faster, but you're also wasting abrasive. That's why it's important to match your abrasive grit and your bond uh, to whatever use you're looking to do out of the uh, abrasive. So whether it's sharpening stones or grinding wheels or whatnot, you're looking to uh, match the bond. And there's different types of bonds. There's like the resin bond, there's metal centered bonding, which we don't really see in sharpening stones. There are some centered stones out there and we can get into that in a different video, but you don't tend to see them 
very often. And like I said, we can get into it in a different video. I'm not overly impressed with them. Uh, you have, you know, hybrid bonds that They use a couple different types of bondings, which we really don't see. You have vitrified bonding, which I have seen in some ceramics and also uh, practical sharpenings, vitrified diamond stones. And that's like a, uh, kind of like a ceramic bonded diamond stone, which that's a video all to itself, but those are actually really nice stones. They can't get them right now in a grit above 2000 because of the way the bonding is and you end up with larger scratches than the diamond abrasive. And then, like I said, you had the electroplated bonding. So you also, what affects the cutting is the grit and the size of the grit so as i said before diamond you can get in natural state you can get man-made and there's several ways to make it the cbn is only uh man-made and then you the reason why they use both of those is because of the hardness and they do have a similar crystalline structure When it comes to grinding versus sharpening, the CBN exhibits a higher thermal stability due to its lower tendency to oxidize. And it has a greater chemical stability. And there is a little bit difference in the shape where, as I said before, the diamond or tetrahedron, the CBN or octahedron, which gives more cutting facets, but it's not just the cutting facets that, that make a difference. Um, if you have more angular type of grain, so pointed angular out, you're obviously gonna get deeper cutting, but it, it's more difficult to get a nice attainable surface finish. So when you're looking for that polished bevel, the diamonds will polish. We see that all the time. The CBN, because of the shape, they're more block-like. So it not only improves the life expectancy of that abrasive, but it also cuts more evenly. You don't have jagged cuts. So if you'll notice a scratch pattern, I probably should have done a couple different scratch patterns on some blades and put them under the microscope so that you could see how much more even a CBN scratch pattern is than diamond. Now diamond still, because of those deep cuts, can sometimes leave a more aggressive edge, but I've been pretty impressed with the CBN stones and, and the finish along with the edge they leave. Uh, a lot of them, your abrasives are commonly coated uh, with copper or nickel or something that improves the anchoring in the bonding material. And then, as I said, grain size makes a difference. So they have different ways of measuring grain size. And as I said, you have different grit ratings you have your fipa rating you have your iso standard you have your din um, which uses a couple different designations one is the metric designation which is based on mesh size of screens and then you have the us uh, designation which is also using screens but it's a number of openings per inch of the screen that corresponds with the mesh size on that. And then you have your uh, micron sizes. I personally kind of wish we would all go to micron sizes because it's easier to understand across the board in my personal opinion. 
Now, let's get to the part that everybody's been wondering about and I get a lot of questions on, is concentration. I've said before, it, it can kind of be complicated. It, it is, but it isn't. It's not, it's not that complicated. There's a lot to remember. So it's not, anybody can learn to understand it. It's just, there's a lot to remember. So for instance, when we're looking at um, concentration in, let's say the diamond stones, we get, <clears throat> some of you have noticed like on the Beneev stones, you get a C100 and we always say it's 100% concentration, which isn't exactly proper terminology. That's the terminology we tend to use when it comes to sharpening, but it's incorrect terminology. The C stands for concentration. The 100 stands for 100. But 100 concentration is not necessarily 100%. A, a C100 equals 4.4 carats. So 4.4 diamond carrots, CBN carrots, per cubic centimeter. So that's about 0.2 grams. So 0.2 grams of diamond in each cubic centimeter. Now, sometimes that can fall in and go along with the depth and how much, how many carrots are within, say a three mil, millimeter thick stone. So in that cubic square, that's what you're looking at, is 4.4 carats. So the 25, the C25, is 1.1 carat. Now, we'll put some of these under the microscope and show you why you get better scratch patterns out of some than the others. Um, I should have brought some Beneve up here, and I didn't but that's okay we've got enough different diamond stones for an understanding so some do measure in percentage but those will come in volume based concentrations in percentage and you'll get like a v6 which i'm not going to go too deeply into because we don't really use it a whole lot when it comes to uh, sharpening stones but a v6 is like like a 25% concentration, which ultimately ends up being a C25. Um, and then you get, you have like a V9, a V12, V8, and then you have V60, which is a volume-based concentration in parts per thousand. But we don't use that really a whole lot when it comes to sharpening stones. So let's take a look at some of these in, under the microscope and see the difference in bonding. We can see how some of the bonding in some of these resins are rougher than others. So the reason why in the resin bonded stones from practical sharpening in uh, Gridomatic, these Poltava stones, it's easy to get some scratches you'll be able to see is because of the bond that the abrasive is in is kind of a rough jagged bond it's a hard stone and when you have rough edges that sometimes stick up past the abrasive then you're going to get stray scratches occasionally i like the way love the way these stones cut once they get to the higher grits then the resin tends to leave scratches. You can minimize that through lapping them and dressing them to a high grit, but uh, you can't always get rid of the scratches completely, or I have yet to be able to. Somebody may be able to, but I haven't at this point. But anyways, Enough of me flapping my gums about concentrations and things like that without looking at them. So let's take a diamond matrix stone. 
So this is a 650 diamond matrix. And I don't know that I've got anything comparable, but let's look at that under a microscope. Now the reason why the diamond matrix gives such a good finish is, I don't know if you guys can see that, but the little white spots on here and some of the yellow is the diamonds. They have a very tight tolerance on micron size on the abrasive size for the diamonds, which is pretty impressive. That's what gives such a nice finish is it's not the amount of diamond as much as it is the quality control of the micron size of their diamonds. I do another one in, uh, since we're on the diamond matrix. This is an 1100. Again, very tight quality control on the size of the diamonds. And also, when you get a higher concentration of diamond, you figure whether that is a 3000 grit, or let's go with micron, whether that's a three micron, whether that's a 10 micron, or whether that is, uh, let's see, a 200 to 160 micron. See, 200 to 160 is a pretty broad range of micron size of abrasive. <clears throat> so let's look at that. So whether, no matter what the, con what the micron size is, when you get a certain concentration, you have that amount of diamond in there. So 4.4 carats in a C100 at 200 micron, is going to be fewer pieces further apart. So this is an 80 grit stone or a 200, 160 micron. And I don't know if you can see it, but you have like a porous type of bond and you have on top of the pores and in between the pores, you have a bracelet. Let's contrast that real quick with a... 3000 grit made by the same company. So you see your pores are getting smaller, but the bond is still jagged versus what you were seeing with the diamond matrix. You don't have a jagged bond. You have a very smooth uh, resin. So you don't have the jagged edges of the resin going along with the diamonds doing any causing any scratches or any cutting it's all the abrasive the same thing is with the veneve ocb the ocb stones are nice and smooth like this they don't have quite as tight of tolerances but they leave a better edge and a shinier finish so this is a 4k in the diamond matrix the black spots you see some of that these little pieces of metal. It's hard to see at this. Uh, you can see some of the white dots. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it's hard to see on this particular microscope because we're only magnifying like 200 times. And these are pretty small. I think they're five micron. So anyways, we've got some shafting glass. I brought up to Show the difference in the abrasive. And the abrasive in here is very evenly spaced. And you, you don't have that porous bonding because this is all in ceramic. Um, let's do a metallic. Let's look at it. So this is a 7.5 micron. So here you see in this metallic bond, most of the abrasive is on the surface, but you do have kind of a pitted uh, bonding similar to 
the resin bonded of these other Poltava stones. And the resin bond of these other Poltava stones are, uh, they have a copper within the bond. You can look at the stone and tell that. And this is, um, I believe a copper or copper tin alloy bonding for these metallic bonded stones. I could be wrong. I would have to look that up, but you can see the abrasive in here and you can see plenty of pits and where the abrasive sets down inside those pits, you're going to get the metal that causes the scratches versus the abrasive. This doesn't set down in there as far as as it does on some of these Poltava stones, or they're both Poltava, but the resin bonded stone rather. Um, let's do a, a 3 2. And so the 3 2, again, you see the abrasive, and you can see some pits from etching them in acid where it's eating away the metal, but you see. This is what happens when you when you etch them. It eats away the metal. So rather than those pits sticking up further than the abrasive, you have the abrasive sticking up further than the pits. Because when you etch them, it kind of smooths that out. And all of those thin points or, or like top ridges of the pits, when you etch them initially, before the abrasive comes out, the pits aren't aren't there. So when you first etch or first etch them, you have the abrasive setting on top, cutting. Once the abrasive pops out, then you have like think of like a lava rock, and you have all these little holes with these little ridges around it. That's part of what you're getting rid of when you etch it. It eats that thin metal down when you put it in the ferric chloride. It eats away at that, exposing new abrasive. So then rather than have some of your abrasive riding down deep in those pits or those pits, the little lava rock like edges being up above your abrasive, scratching the metal or doing nothing to the metal on harder steels, then you etch them, you eat that away and you expose new abrasive. It's kind of the same concept only with resin when it comes to the resin bonded stones that have the, the copper bond within the resin. You get a bunch of abrasive that sets in there. When the abrasive finally comes loose, then you have pits and you have these little ridges that will cause scratches or sometimes do nothing to the metal. And then when you resurface that, well, then you're bringing your abrasive back to the top and you have it setting back on top of the bond and you're cutting more efficiently again. So I brought up a, a lapping film to show you why the lapping films are efficient. The lapping films, now they may wear out quick. See if I can, there we go. But the abrasive in there, again, very tightly monitored as far as quality control. So the size of it is, is real tight together. Um, you don't have a lot of large abrasives and then small abrasives because that creates different finishes. So you get a lot smoother finish the tighter your quality control is. So if you're looking for a one micron film, you don't want any abrasive in there larger than one micron. If you have larger abrasive than one micron film, then you can't really be a one micron film. So with these, when you have a three, two, in theory, or if they're using a tight quality control, you shouldn't have any abrasive in here larger than three, larger than three micron. Unfortunately, sometimes you do, but in theory you shouldn't. I would say you don't in the diamond matrix. And the reason why you get a, a different finish is sometimes the concentration. 
So the diamond matrix, I think, is a higher concentration than I originally thought it was, at least in some of the lower grits. <clears throat> and that's why they cut so fast. That's why they remove a lot of metal fast. The thing is, when you have too high of a concentration, those of you that have used the Venive stones and, and see that the C25, which only has 1.1 carat in uh, three in a cubic centimeter, uh, gives a better finish than one that has 4.4 carats. And part of the reason is, at that point, you're getting your your diamonds too uh, close together. So sometimes they're setting on top of each other or setting right there together and making a cut together. And it shows up, they're not, there's not necessarily really agglomeration. There can be, but even if there's not, if they're just real close together, they'll make scratches that appear to be larger than the micron size of the abrasive. So when you're looking for a good finish, it's reaching that happy medium between efficiently cutting and being able to polish well. So you may cut real efficiently, the higher concentration you go, you have all these diamonds in there making all these cuts, but they're so close together, it. They may cut within the same scratch if they're overlapping. So think of like plowing a field. You want, as I've said before, you when you make those cuts, you make little burrs on the edge and you, you're opening up the metal like you're plowing a field. So you'll get that little metal, kind of like the dirt rolls over the top. You'll, you'll get that in a, a similar fashion. So if you got two of them together, then that are too close together and they run partially within the same ridge. So you have a plow here and a plow here and they're running within the same ridge, then you're gonna get a wider cut, which is gonna leave a larger scratch. And you also have to think, when you, when you get into the, the finer grits, the lower micron size, 4.4, carats of diamond is a lot denser when you you have more surface area so you you have more diamond particles because they're smaller you have more diamond particles within that cubic centimeter so you've got it packed with diamonds so really <clears throat> it, a lot of times you get uh, better quality of a finish and more efficient cutting if you go with like a C100 in the lower grits and then once you get up to the higher grits and you're looking for a better finish then go with a uh, a lower C rating lower concentration rating because by going with the lower concentration rating you're giving your, your diamonds room to breathe so to speak so they're not all cluttered together uh, hopefully all that jumbled uh, description makes sense. I probably should have wrote some kind of script or something and uh, discussed it that way instead of just going off the top of my head and uh, trying to share what little bit of knowledge is up in my peanut there. But if you guys have any questions, please leave comments. I'd be more than happy to make another video or get into a discussion with you. Or a lot of you know how to get a hold of me. You can message me and we can discuss it that way. Hopefully I tried to explain this in a way that's not using a bunch of scientific terms and not trying to be confusing, uh, but still at the same time, try to be informative. So hopefully you guys got something out of this. Uh, if you would, comment down below, like, subscribe. Uh, please, you know, let me know what you think. Uh, don't hesitate to contact me and we can discuss this further if you would like. If you would like to see uh, 
understanding abrasives part four, part five, so that we can keep getting more in depth in this. I'd be more than happy to do that. Just let me know. So thanks for watching.